Welcome to Michelle's Making. Hope you're ready for coffee, crafts, cookies, and cocktails. Let's get going. Welcome and welcome back to those of you who are returning. I really do appreciate that. Today is National Speech Debate Education Day, National Employee Appreciation Day, National Absinthe Day. If you don't know, that's an anise flavored liqueur or liquor, really. It's not a liqueur. Um, Cheese Doodle Day, Multiple Personality Day, Unplugging Day, something I think we could all do a little more of, and Dress in Blue Day. I realized when I was dressing for this that I don't have a lot of blue in the way of tops or blouses, so I found the closest thing that I had. But the most important day that it is, is Sally Sue Day. My little pumpkin here is three years old today. I got her when she was about 11 weeks old, 11 or 12 weeks, and she was just a tiny little thing, and she still is tiny as you can see, but she brings me so much comfort and joy. Well, let's make it a great day. Get going with our coffee, French vanilla creamer today. We'll get a little caffeine boost and get going on those crafts. Our first craft, is an Easter planter. I picked up this planter at Dollar Tree, gave it a couple of coats of, you guessed it, Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white, and the lettering on the side of the planter is slightly raised. So after it dried, I took sandpaper and went over the lettering just enough to let it stand out a little. And you can play around with that and do as little or as much as you like. I did this to both sides of the planter. Next, I took my Sharpie paint pen and went along the bottom and the top of the planter to give it that enameled look. I also went over the lettering in just some random spots and made random markings around the edge of the planter and along the side, just in odd shapes and no rhyme or reason to it, just to kind of make it look like that's where the enamel had chipped off. Next, I inserted a block of floral foam. It fit in very snugly, so I didn't have to glue it or even take the wrapping off. I then took these picks from Dollar Tree and snipped them from the bunch and randomly placed them around the planter, just alternating the colors on each side in the front and the back and the center. It really filled in nicely, but I did have a couple of stems of just leaves that I put into the two spots where I could kind of see a little bareness. Later, I decided to add some small Easter eggs on picks that I had, just to add a little more Easter happy, as you can see here. Our next craft is a gnome garden. I had picked up this lantern at Goodwill for five bucks and I thought it was really cute. And it was open at the top and I wasn't sure if that had been covered with glass or something else in the past or if it always had been that way. It was in really good shape and really cute. These are the accessories I picked up at Dollar Tree and the sheet moss I picked up at Walmart. I also had some loose moss that I would gotten at Dollar Tree that I'm going to use on the inside of the garden. I began by opening the sheets of moss and uh, laying it out to see what I had to work with. I decided I was going to use it for the top of the lantern to make it look like a thatched roof on a cottage. I began by applying the hot glue and the pieces of the sheet moss. I worked my way around the top of the lantern and trimmed up a little bit, but not too much because the shaggy look really gave it some character.
Once the roof was done, I went to work on my garden, installing the pond and the staircase. I apologize that you can't see very well here, but I had to do it upright rather than laying it on, on its side. But I hot glued in the pond and the stairs and also a little bit of the loose moss on the bottom to make it look grassy. And then of course my three gnomes, I hot glued them in as well. I had placed the stairs right next to the pond, so it kind of looked like they could climb the stairs and jump into the pond. But there you have it. Our gnome garden is complete. Our next item really isn't a craft. It's just an update of my tray. Now I have this autumn tray that I featured in a previous video where I used a placemat insert to uh, kind of adapt it for a holiday. I did one for Christmas and then after Christmas I had the one that you just saw me remove. And then I saw this at Dollar Tree and I really liked the message and I liked the colors of it. So I cut it down. Remember it's a 12 inch square in the center of that tray. And as I cut this down, I realized that I could cut it to 12 inches wide, but the height of it of 12 inches um, it was actually a little bit short of that. It was about 11 and a half inches. So I actually inserted the sign, the previous sign or placemat actually, and then it put this one on top of it. I used double-sided tape to get it to stay in place, but by doing it this way, rather than seeing a little bit of that autumn print at the bottom and the top, you would see just the bottom and the top of this insert. Um, therefore looking a little white there and it didn't look out of place. I was happy with how it looked. What do you think? And there you have it, the tray update. Our next item is also not really a craft, but it is something I made. It's a vision board and I just wanted to share with you how I made it. I took two pieces of the foam core board from Dollar Tree and glued them together because one was not quite thick enough. A push pin would go all the way through it and I was using push pins on it. And for the frame, I used paint sticks that I cut the handle part off. So they were just straight pieces. I glued it together with Gorilla Glue and the top and the bottom, it took two of the sticks with just a little bit of overhang, which was good for the side pieces. But for the side, one stick wasn't quite long enough, so I had to cut a small piece for each side. I used my miter shears to trim the paint sticks. Now these are pretty good sized paint sticks, so the miter shears don't go all the way through them easily. I, they probably do for someone who has strength but I scored them well and was able to snap it like you just saw me there and sanded it down and it fit in perfectly. Everything was glued down and once it had dried, I took the lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree to fill in the little gap or spot between each of the paint sticks. And once that dried, I sanded it down and then used my ballet pink uh, to paint the frame. People often ask me where I get my inspiration or ideas from, and I Google things on the internet, and I do Pinterest and a lot of other social media, and I print out pictures of things that are, I think I could do something like that, or I get part of the pieces of it, but there you have it, my vision board. Our next craft is a tray and bottles. I had picked up this tray at Goodwill for 99 cents, but you can see it's somebody paid $1.50 for it at some place in time. I'm gonna use my linen white chalk paint, but first remove the labels and sand off the bottom a little, and then a couple of good coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and linen white. After this had dried, I took my antique wax and did a dry brush technique to give it some character, make it look a little aged and distressed. Mm -hmm. 
I picked up three bottles at Dollar General and I gave them all a couple of good coats. It took almost three coats, I believe. Those had dried completely. I then took a pearl garland from the holidays that I'd picked up at Dollar Tree and wrapped it around using hot glue to secure it, but I wrapped it around twice around the main part of the body and then around the neck a couple of times as well. I can't stress enough about being cautious with hot glue. You see me using my metal paint spatula often just because of that reason. Those burns are no fun. I did this for all three bottles. I then had a greenery that I had gotten from Dollar Tree, which I cut three stems off of and used those in the three bottles. I just arranged them how I like, and there you have it, a tray and bottles. Time to wrap things up with a delicious melon martini. For this drink, you're going to need melon liqueur, watermelon vodka, and our sour mix that is the Jose Cuervo ready to drink like margarita. Of course, have your glass chilling while you build your drink over crushed ice in the shaker. I use the miniature bottles when I wanna try something new or just have something different that I am, I'm only gonna have one of. I also have a lot of people ask how much liquor is actually in that little bottle. It's a little under one and a half ounces. And I added the full bottle to this drink and then three quarters of an ounce of uh, the melon liqueur and then two and a half ounces of the margarita mix. This is all well shaken until chilled and then poured into the chilled glass. The only thing left to do is to enjoy. Well folks, that's it for another week. Thank you so much for staying with me to the end. I appreciate that. Our February giveaway, Cindy T from Orlando is our winner. So thank you so much, Cindy, for faithfully watching, subscribing, and also commenting on the videos. I appreciate that. I'll be getting in touch with you shortly. And for our big reveal, my goodness, I know we've talked about this and it, I, I have promised it and it is coming. But unfortunately, we had a little bit of a setback, plumbing issues and parts issues. So we're going to postpone it for a few weeks. But I promise you when it is complete, I will do a reveal. But in the meanwhile, make it a great week. Don't forget to take time to stop and smell the coffee. And I'll see you next Friday.